Okay, so in a previous video, like the last one I made, I made, I, actually I had two videos. Number one, I, no, it was the same video. I set up the equation of motion for a mass swinging on a string, a pendulum, uh, and then I used numerical calculation to solve the differential equation that that made. Uh, so I want to now make a visual model of this pendulum, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So there's two objects we need in Python to be able to, dis to display this. Number one is the sphere, and this is the most basic object in vPython. So uh, here is a screenshot. This is a sphere, uh, and the function sphere has a couple of important points. I don't think this is too complicated. Number one is the position. This is the location of the center of the sphere. It's a vector location. You need to give it a, a, a position. Next is the radius, the size. That makes sense. Uh, you can pick the color. You don't have to. You can leave it just grayish, whitish. I don't know whatever color it is. And here's another one that I like to add on here, a comma to add it on here. Make trail equals true. This means that whenever this moves, it's going to leave a trail behind. That's kind of cool. Okay, the other one that's a little bit more complicated is a cylinder. I'm going to use this for my string, which you actually don't even have to display the string, but I'm going to do that anyway. Uh, so the string is a cylinder. Now there's two important parts to the cylinder, and the first is the position. The position is the location of one end of the uh, cylinder. So that's this vector location right here. Axis is a vector starting from the position. So if I start here and go in the direction 1, negative 1, 0, I end up over here. So the cylinder is described by one point that ends up as the position, as one end, and then a vector that points to the other end. Does that make sense? And then the radius is just how thick it is, and that's all there is. Okay, now we need to switch over here. This is the program I already made. This is uh, the numerical calculation for the motion of the pendulum. I'm going to copy all this. I'm not going to get that. I'm just going to get this. And I'm going to go over here and start a new window. Okay. Now I want to model this. So I need G. I need theta. Uh, I'll keep it like that. Let's put it a little bit smaller. 40 degrees for now. Uh, D theta. Everything's the same. What I need to do is to build my system. And I'm going to have three things. Number one, I'm going to have uh, a, a pivot. Okay. I'm going to have a point where the, the pendulum hangs from. And then I'm going to have a mass, which I'll call a ball, and I'll have a string. So let's say, uh, let's call it top. It's a ball. It's a type of object, sphere. Its position is going to be equal to, I want this to be a meter long pendulum. I already said that. So zero, um, let's say negative or plus L over two, right? So it's a meter above. That way it'll center things a little bit better. Uh, and I'm going to make this really small. So the radius is going to be equal to, that's a meter, let's say 0 0.05. And I don't really color, care about the color. Now I'm going to make the ball. So the ball is uh, a sphere. And its position, I need to find its position, OK? Its position is going to be equal to L times, actually, no. It's going to be top dot POS plus L times vector because see I, I need I have the length and the angle already the angles at oh I wanted that at 40 degrees let's put that at 94 40 degrees uh, so I'm going to use the same thing I did before but the x coordinate I did this when I plotted uh, this down here which I'm going to delete in just a second so the x coordinate is going to be sine theta so sine of theta the y coordinate is going to be equal to negative cosine theta, and then z zero, and that's that, right? Now the radius is going to be equal to let's say if I put point one, is that too big? Uh, let's try zero point one, and let's make it. I'm going to put it down here. Color is yellow, and the make trail. Okay, um, and let's put this at just one. I'll let that run. And let's just see visual pendulum. Save it. And let's see, I like to run it without even doing anything with these objects to make sure things aren't super crazy. 
Oh, I didn't put the string in there. Okay. That that does look a little bit big. So let's make uh, the top smaller. Let's make this uh, point 0.1. And let's make this one uh, 0.05. And then I need the string. String equals cylinder. It's going to start at the top up here. So I'm going to say the position is equal to top.pos. It's the same thing. And then the axis is going to be equal to, um, let's go ahead and write this as the vector from here to there. So I'm going to say, watch this, ball.pos minus top.pos. Now for the radius, let's see, I had a radius of, let's try uh, zero ray, radius, you got to spell it right. Radius, that's right. Wow, uh, 0 0.01. And I'll, and I'll leave it as white. Let's just see if that works. Okay. I'm pretty happy. You can't really see the, the top out there, but that doesn't really matter. Okay. Now let's run this uh, for five seconds. Let's do five seconds. Now the first thing we need to do in here is to add the statement here. Before when I calculated this, I just wanted to do it as fast as I could. But now I want it to go in real time. So rate 100 says don't do more than 100 loops per second. And since I have a time step of 0.01, 100 loops per second would give it real time. Now, it's, if you're doing super crazy stuff, then it might not go that fast, but it won't go faster. Okay. So all this stuff is fine up here. Uh, I, I do need to do the same calculations. I do not need to calculate X and L. Okay, but oh, well, actually I do. Sorry. I don't actually have to, but. Um, okay, so the first thing I can do is move the ball. So I need to put the ball in the new location since data has changed. So I'm gonna say ball.pos, that's just the position of the ball, and it's going to be equal to, it's actually the same thing as up here. I'll just copy it. But see, data has changed, so the ball's position has changed. And that looks good. Okay, now I need to update the axis of the string string dot axis equals and again it's the same thing it's ball dot pos minus top dot pos but the ball pos changed so the axis is going to change and i think that's it i don't need to do anything else let's see if that works okay save it uh check it out winning Okay, come on, you gotta be impressed. And it is in, in three dimensions. So let's do one other thing. What if I make this 90 degrees? Yep, that's pretty cool, right? Come on, that's cool. Wait, what if I make that 110 degrees? Will it work? Uh-huh. You're impressed, aren't you? Well, you know what? I hate to tell you this, but I'm actually impressed myself. 175. Okay, now i tell you right now, the one of the things that's gonna be nice about this visualization is that, why did it stop? Does that run five seconds? Hmm. Okay, one of the things that's gonna be nice is eventually we're going to make a double pendulum. And you definitely want to display the motion of a double pendulum. That we have got a little bit to go before we get there, but that's gonna come and this is going to be useful for that. Okay, it's fun to visualize things and I'll talk to you guys later.